Thank you. God bless you. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. We are reaching to you from the throne of God. And God is so kind. We are in Apostolic Faith Church, Bahad Nairobi. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, speak to us. Show us your glory. Remove us from darkness, from those levels where we still we feel tired. Rejuvenate our hearts. Raise us by your word. In Christ we pray. Ah, our topic is, as we shared, is now we are in part four of victory over moments of fainting. Last time we shared about one of the causes is exhausted source, and we also shared about the dryness. Another one is you faint because you are being chased. You are somebody is chasing after you. You are unable to run. I'm unable now to run. I'm tired. When you get tired in the race. And it's not just a race, but you are running because behind you, an enemy, a situation is running after you. You try to run, you try to run until there's a way the devil and forces of darkness run after you until they make sure you no longer have strength to run again. And then you faint. We need to overcome that. Another thing that brings fainting is lack of direction. You, you have the strength. But now you cannot discern the direction. You lack direction. It's really frustrating when you waste time looking and looking, trying to sort out things, and you have no direction at all. It makes you tired. It makes you lose strength, resources, and makes your mind see failure. We need to get direction. Another thing that brings fainting is pain. An oppressive pain pointing at maybe death, pointing at terminal end of something. Pain that is oppressive. And it's pointing at terminal head, terminal head of your soul, terminal head of your business, terminal head of your career. Hey, we need to overcome that. Another thing is, is the person you live with, especially people you are yoked with. Maybe your husband, your wife, your children. You cannot run away from them. People who you are yoked to. And literally, they literally. They, they become different. They become entangled. They become, you know, you are, you are holding to somebody. You want to run, but he does not want to run. You want to be wise. He does not want to, want to, to take that avenue. You want to make more money, but she or he has no interest in that. You want your son to become practical, good person, but has no interest. And yet, you can't deny or avoid the truth that that is your son. He will ever be your son. When devil attacks people who are yoked to you in a covenant way, you cannot avoid them, but they are the attack. Or they decide otherwise when you as a family should move together. That is very, very bad attack. And... Um, you find in the Bible, like now in 1 Samuel chapter 30, read it, where the Bible says, David and his strong men came back and found the place they were living in, Siklag, has been burned down by a very wild, wild uh, tribe, Amalekites, and they took away children and wives. The Bible says they cried until they had no more strength to cry. And you know when people cry, they end up now on looking for who to bring. You either have insights, a discovery of way out, or you start blaming each other. So they say, now, let us stone David. He is our leader. And David was so much pained. And instead of allowing the pain to persist, the Bible says he turned 
to the other side and found the priest Abiada. As a priest, I want to now wear the priesthood, the priesthood clothing effort, that garment that the priest would wear when he is seeking the will of God. And David took it and asked God, God, do I learn after Amalekites? And God said, Yes. We will recover all people. Wives and children said, Definitely, you recover all. And that moment, the strength in David was rekindled and went across to the whole people, those who are so tired and intending to kill him as an option. He told them, Now, brothers and sisters, or brothers and sisters, I want to run after the Amalekites. I'm bringing back all children and all wives. Join me now. You see, I would like to say this by God's grace. Among the family members, or among, you are among a society or maybe a unit somewhere, a group of people, whom maybe you lead, or people you share life with, I would like you to be, to be different. When they will be totally exhausted, there is an avenue that should not, should not lack. Whereby you can turn to God, be renewed, receive a revelation, receive an understanding, receive an insight, receive a discovery, and come back with a new, new direction out of the crisis. That's very important. Be like David. Another time is when Christ takes over. If you go to the Bible, uh, Mark chapter 4 from that 5, when Christ decided that the disciples, including him, they crossed over the sea, and there was turmoil. There was great storm, and the boat was sinking. And Peter and all the disciples tried their level best. They could not succeed. But Christ was lying somewhere on a pillow. And they called Christ as Jesus. Don't you care we are perishing in the sea? The storms are so much heavy on us. Christ stood up and commanded the wind to stop. The storms to cease. And there was great calm. I want to tell you the truth. Another way that we overcome this, these moments of fainting is when Jesus takes over. And we know he has taken over. His command will be final. I remember that day when Christ commanded the storm. Disciples had never seen Jesus commanding storms before. They knew Christ could heal the sick. They knew Christ could cast out demons. But they did not know his power over, over the powers of nature. And now when he stops the wind and the storms, Bible says the disciples ran to the other side of the boat. And they were afraid and they said, what? Manner of man is this. Even winds and storms obey him. May the Lord lead you. And you discover another strength in him. You know him in one way. You know him in two ways. Give Jesus chance to show you his other level of power. Give Jesus chance to show you his other level of masses. Give Jesus chance to prove his power over other issues. You knew him in one way. But if you give him chance, you know him in five ways. And you will be able to sing like disciples. What manner of man is this? Even this kind of struggle and battles obey him. May God help us in these battles. Another thing is second touch from the Lord. If you read your Bible, in the book, in the Bible, Matthew chapter 8 verse 20, when Christ went to Bethsaida and found this bright man, the Bible says he took him aside and touched his eyes and caused this man to see. And the man said, and Christ demanded, what can you see? And the man said, I see people walking like trees. And Christ touched him again and asked, what can you see now? He said, I can see everything clearly. Those are two levels of touch. The first one, I see people walking like. Walking like. You don't see the original clear way. You see things which are like. 
There are times when what you have is not a clear object. It's not a clear image of the object. It's not a clear thing. Some people even know when I'm speaking here. You are yet to get the real money. You are yet to get the real wife, the real husband. You are still struggling. You are yet to get the real children. And yet you have children. You are yet to get the real church. You are yet to get the real joy. Let me tell the truth by the grace of God. You are missing the second touch. The second touch, you don't see things like. You see things truly. You see things truly. The man said, now I can see everything clearly. And in the name of the Lord, I would like to send you to Jesus again for a second touch. Yes, you can't persist, persist in deception. I decree by the mouth of God, there's possibility of another touch. Don't conclude issues. Don't say you're not gifted. Don't say you can't make it. Don't say you are foolish. Don't say you can't perform. Don't say you can't win. You need the second touch. Whereby you don't see money like. You don't see your wife like. You don't see your life like. It's, you don't see the images. You don't see fake things. Second touch of my master. The king of kings. Will give you clear, clear view of life. I would like you to receive the real money. I said, this is the real money. It's not just an image of money. This is real marriage. It's not just a passive thing. This is not real preaching. Yes, few people are able to go for the real. And yet you are growing old. You are at the age of 50 and still waiting for the real. You are at the age of 60. You are still waiting for the real. No way. Now I declare, receive the second touch. You don't see things like other things. You see the real. I say you see the real. Satan should leave you. Darkness should get away from you. Powers of failure leave you now. Limitation get away from your brain. Yes, evil confession, negative confession be drained from your mouth. And now this is the second touch. You see the real, real and be satisfied with the goodness of God. Yes, it must happen to you now. I speak it. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.